Creating a high converting landing page is both an art and a science. Sure, you can have the best looking landing page, but understanding science behind buyer psychology and behavior can take your landing page from to, wow, take my money now. And one of those people who understand landing pages and buyer psychology is Pedro Cortes. He's a SaaS growth consultant who has worked with hundreds of SaaS companies. Today, Pedro will be sharing the three psychology pillars of irresistible landing pages. In this Marketing Pops episode, you learn first why bad messaging could be costing you big money. Second, common landing page mistakes you should avoid right now. Third, pair those three psychology pillars of irresistible landing pages. And fourth, how you can overcome limiting beliefs in your marketing career. Before we start, I've created a power cheat sheet that you can download, fill it, and apply the three psychology pillars of irresistible landing pages. Go to marketingpowerups.com to get it now or find the link in the description. Are you ready? Let's go. Marketing Power Ups. Ready? Go! Here's your host, Rambly John. So we're going to be talking about messaging and how, how to improve that with a framework that you have. Before we jump in, you on your site, you have this phrase that bad messaging is costing company big money uh can you can you put that into put that into context and explain why why that is like what is uh why is messaging so important that it's costing companies money yeah it's uh it's actually very important because if you think of your website almost like a a salesman right it's like you're 24/7 365 days uh, uh, a year a salesman um and most likely is not going to be fully optimized right so there is a lot of competition out there. There are a lot of decisions that uh, you know potential buyers have to make in order to decide which SaaS company they want to go with. And actually, buying a SaaS is a, a decision that is getting more and more complex, right? So they have, uh, let's say, you have thousands and thousands of potential uh, buyers going into your website every day, and then they start having these questions, right? So, how does this apply to my company, or can it handle the scale that I need? For example, this many. Uh, team members or this much storage? Uh, does it have uh, all the compliance requirements I need? How long would it take to set up? Right? What is the actual results or the ROI that I'm getting with this product? Right? How is it better than the stuff that I'm using now? Right? So literally, by every single question that you that people don't understand from the website is a reason for them to click away and go with someone else that feels. Uh, that is just communicates this better, right? Because what I'm seeing more and more, and when, uh, like, let's say marketers and founders hit their their tipping point where they want to talk to me, is when they're sick of getting people to only understand the value of their products after they try it or after they jump on a demo, where they their close rates and their conversion rates are actually really good afterwards. But what if every single person that goes to, on your website would really understand the value that you provide without having to try it. They would understand why you're better than everyone else on the market. They'll understand the amount of money that you can generate generate them. They'll understand how easy it is to actually set up or how much you help, right? Because people assume the weirdest things. Like I, I've had people where uh, like one of the clients I've helped, uh, they could set up everything, like they had like a CRM for insurance uh, agencies. And they could set up everything uh, in one week. They would do it for them and all that stuff. And people would assume it would take like three or four months to set it up and they'll have to do everything. And they wasn't, they, they, they never mentioned uh, in the previous version that they actually did all the setup and it could have been done in a, one week. So even if everything else was clear, people were still thinking, yes, I understand the value that we provide, but just by that one question is going to take three months to set up, even if that's not even true, they just assume that, why would they buy? They'll keep delaying the decision to buy for no reason, right? And those are literally dozens of reasons why they're not signing up and dozens of reasons for on how you might be losing money because of it. I love that. You're totally right. I think the word that you said that really resonates with this is understanding. I think if people are confused, they're, they walk away, they're not excited, but they come in and sometimes there's this value gap where... They think it's something, but it's not. Mm -hmm. And now they're upset or <laughs> disappointed yeah. with what you what you have to offer. So I think that's a really, really good point. What are some common mistakes that you've seen in terms of messaging that just maybe at this point is start, starting to become your pet peeve? <laughs> it's like, come on, man, again, 
what are those uh, those mistakes that you see over and over again when it comes to messaging? Yeah, I think, uh, man, I could be here like all day. So uh, <laughs> you have to be the one filtering uh, these out. Um, because like, uh, I think the one of the first things that they do is they, let's say they want to improve their messaging. First things they do is they jump into the page like way too soon. Uh, they mm. start thinking about headlines and what they want to talk about and all, and all that stuff. Uh, the very first thing I do with clients is exactly the opposite. So I spend probably half of the time uh, trying to outline with clients what are the what is the result that we uh, providing, why are we better, and how easy it is to get started. Because if we don't have if we're not really really clear on what is the underlying result that they want, uh, and what is the one or two USPs that they have, and all these little things, and what are the concerns keeping them from signing up, we have zero chance of creating a page that's going to be really clear, right? Because when you're trying to come up with copy uh, and you jump to it like right away, uh, you're trying to think about what is USB, but at the same time, what am I going to say and what the image should be here and what is the order? Like your brain cannot think of all that stuff at the same time. You have to break it down into several sections. And if you do outline it really well, manage the page going to write itself. But mm. no SaaS company ever uh, does that. Um, another mistake that they do is they never go deep enough, right? For example, let's say you have a tool uh, that provides like analytics for uh, something or some niche or, or, or whatever it might be. Like people hate analytics. Like analytics, there are numbers, they're like the dashboard. No one wants to look at, it, uh, at them, right? So they're not right. buying analytics. They're buying insights, right? So what you need to sell them is what are the insights that they want to track that you want to make sure that you want to cover on the website so they know I can track this, this, and this, and therefore that's why I want to buy it, right? If you don't put that on the website, no one's going to buy it, right? Let's say you're sending analytics for e-commerce, right? If I don't uh, understand the one or two metrics that e-commerce companies need to understand, which probably might be the abandoned cart rates or the average basket size or whatever it might be, um, then they're not going to buy it because they don't feel like that tool is going to provide them with the insights they need or is going to be hard to interpret the data because that's the 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 most boring parts. No one likes to do that. Right? So the second mistake is they don't go deep enough. Right? They miss the points completely. Um, and there are like a lot of different mistakes. Right? So they also use like a lot of illustrations. They don't show the products. Uh, when it comes to social proof, they uh, talk about things like, hey, it's an amazing tool, I love it, we have five stars on Trustpilot or something. Like real social proof, it comes from someone you can relate to. So let's say you're doing, let's say you have a tool for agencies, right? I want to see testimonial from an agency owner talking about a result that I want or a problem that they face in the past that I currently have, right? So for example, I, let's say you have a, I worked with a, a client like this in the past as well. They had an email marketing tool for agencies so they can do this for clients. All the testimonials we featured, and we actually edit this and ask for, for permission for uh, from these customers and all that stuff. Uh, th they always say yes anyway. Um, and we actually said, uh, this tool enables us to do email campaigns for clients two times faster, right? Or uh, we are able to reduce the costs per account uh, by two or three X or whatever the result was, right? So we're talking about the results that they want to see and we're showing that other people are getting them, right? We're not showing that other people think it's a cool tool or it's easy to use and all that stuff. That doesn't mean anything, right? That's the problem. How many mistakes do you want me to cover? No, that's, <laughs> that's good. No, those are good ones. Not going deep enough, using illustration. I really do appreciate that. I don't want to dwell in mistakes too much because <laughs> I want to yeah. dwell into the solution. I want to dwell into this, uh, this framework that you uh, have shared on LinkedIn. Once again, for free, thank you for being so generous. Uh, just walking through these three things, these three uh, psychology principles behind an irresistible SaaS offer that applies to landing pages as well. And you share that it's result, better, and risk. Can you talk a little bit about this, this framework uh, that, you have, that you have put together? I saw how uh, the, these three things come together into making an irresistible uh, offer for SaaS. After a few years of thinking about this, it's almost like sometimes when I'm reflecting on this, is on all these things, is like I'm becoming a philosopher of SaaS conversions <laughs> or something, looking at, at nothing and try to come up with these ideas. 
Uh, but over the last few years, I've noticed like a few patterns on what is the easiest way to figure out how to create these irresistible offers. So it's easier to figure out why is it not converting the best that it could be or how we come up with the right landing page or how, uh, what are the things that we need to talk about. And over the last few years, I, I boiled down into this Venn diagram where you need to have three things at the same time. Otherwise, you're just not maximizing your conversions. And you still have the variable of you're explaining them, but you can explain each one of them even better. Like you, you can never stop optimizing this stuff. You can play with this for, for years to come. And the three pillars that you need is showing them what is the result that you provide? Why are you better than other tools? So that means what they're using now and what they're considering to use. I mean, a competitor or like whatever other solution. Sometimes it's hiring someone else. Depends on who you're competing with. The, 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 your competition can get really complex. And then uh, what is the risk? So the risk could be um, how long it takes to set up or the team not use it because they don't like it. Uh, those things that go through people's mind that make them fear uh, if they like the signing in the first place, right? That, that keep them from the signing, that's not good. If you don't get them all three at once, which is a very, very tiny intersection in that Venn, that Venn diagram, your message is just not good enough, right? Because if we can tell them what is the result and how much money that they can make and why is it 10 times better than what they're using now, but they believe is going to take six months to implement. They have to redo the entire process. They're going to have to train their team. They're going to have to migrate their data. They're going to tell you, or they're going to think, I'll check this out six months from now. And that six months from now never comes, right? And you want to you think about this as a sales call, because if these objections came up, you, these would be the answers that you would get, right? Very similar on the website, they just don't tell you. That's why it's harder for most SaaS companies to do it because they don't tell you, there's no feedback, right? Only tests can kind of give you that. If you get, if you explain uh, like why you're better than other tools, right? And uh, how easy it is to get started, right? So it's easy to train the team. They can be up to speed really fast, right? It's way better than what they're using now, but they don't understand how much money that they can make from this or save or whatever. They're going to think this is a nice to have. This is just like a tool that I might have seen on product hunts that looks really cool, but uh, I'm never going to pay for it because I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's going to make me any money, right? So why should I pay for it, right? So they're, they're either not going to sign up or they're not going to be not going to have any willingness to pay because they don't see what is what is the result they provide or you're limiting the willingness to pay because uh, I also try to optim uh, uh, help clients either optimize for uh, bigger companies, attracting bigger companies, or to be able to position themselves in a way that they can increase the price. I had one of the case studies where we 5x the price or 4x the price and didn't see any hits on the conversions, right? And it wasn't from $4 a month to $16 a month. It was from 75 to 250 something like that, right? So it was um, it's quite a big difference in terms of CAC and all that stuff or the return on uh, on CAC and all that stuff, right? So that's the other scenario. The last scenario is if you, they understand how easy it is to get started and they understand what is the result that you provide, but they don't understand why is it five to 10 times better than what they're using now. They're going to think it's just a little bit better than what they're using now. And they're just going to think, I already have a solution for this. I don't need it, right? The product that I'm using now or this person uh, that I'm using for this role or uh, doing maybe doing nothing at all, is is uh, is maybe even if it's not as good as like 80% there, it doesn't feel worth it. You don't overcome the resistance of changing to from one product to another because it doesn't feel 10 times better. It feels 10% better. And you cannot sell anyone like, like, like that. I love this. Thank you for sharing that. That it really needs to come all together. That it's, you know, it, 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 the results are there. Uh, it's giving them better results than what they have right now. It is better than the current solution that they have, and mm -hmm. it, it's easier. So it challenges all the risk. And when all this comes together, it's just, you said it, irresistible. It really yeah. is irresistible. Before we continue, I want to thank the sponsor for this episode, 42 Agency. When you're in scale up mode, you have to hit your KPIs. The pressure is on to deliver demos and signups. It's a lot to handle. Demand gen, ABM, email sequences, revenue ops, and more. 
That's where 42 Agency, founded by my good friend, Camille Rexin, can help you. They're a strategic partner that's helped B2B SaaS companies like ProfitWell, Teamwork, Sprout Social, and HubDoc build a predictable revenue engine. If you're looking for performance experts and creatives to solve your hardest marketing problems at a fraction of the cost of in-house, look no further. Go to 42 Agency, that's number 42, agency.com, to talk to a strategist to learn how you can build a high-efficiency revenue engine now. Find the link in the description or show notes. Well, that's all for now. Let's jump back into this episode. I appreciate you sharing this. Can you walk through this applied to uh, page right now? And I believe we're going to be talking about Loom's landing page. And for people who are tuning on this via video, um, you can see it. But for people who are tuning via audio, in Loom, there's a landing page. It says, show, show it and say it and send it. Uh, and then the subheadline is, record quick videos off your screen cam, an essential tool for hybrid workplaces. And right below it, it's instantly read to share and watch at home in the office in a bit of both. And you shared this on, I believe, LinkedIn, a video of this on how you would improve all this uh, this page. Can you walk through how, um, you know, what what is, you call this the bad version. <laughs> Can you walk through yeah. why the bad version is bad and why the, your b- version is, is better? Essentially, what they're doing here is like Loom obviously has a really simple product, right? Uh, it's easy to understand that you just record videos with it and you can replace some of the meetings, right? You can, with you can like take a report, record a video and say, this is what I want, or this is what we need to improve, or this is what we need to, we need to improve this metric, reduce that one, whatever, right? Uh, it's easy to understand that. Uh, the things that, that Loom are totally missing out on and other big companies like Canva and all that stuff are missing out on is because they don't focus on all the use cases that they can provide and how deep they can go and how many places they can share these Loom videos, people come in uh, to the to the website just thinking, I'm going to use Loom from time to time or I'm going to use Loom to onboard new employees or to record uh, record some trainings from, from time to time, right? So they come in with one use case. We want them to come into this page and come in with one use case that they had in mind and leave with five other ideas on how they can lose, use Loom every single day and how multiple people in their team could use Loom. Because the biggest opportunity for Loom right now is to not get one person in the team to use it, to get every single person in the team to use it, right? Because they already have a bunch of people uh, inside a company using it. Now they need to sell it to everyone in the team they want everyone to do asynchronous communication or as much of it as possible, right? And that's what we need to sell them on because that's the, the more videos they'll use, the more they'll edit, the more they'll pay, the more users they'll have. It literally means that they can three to five X or however uh, much they can increase their volume per accounts. Uh, that, that, like that's where their gold mine is. And that's how I optimize this page because the, the purpose of their product is already like uh, pretty obvious. Right. Uh, so the first thing that we did, um, in this case, like as an example, is they didn't talk about the program. Right. I actually kept the same headline because it was okay. Uh, like the part of what the product is is pretty okay. And the first thing that I've changed, besides saying that how many users they have and how many companies use it and all that stuff, is I wanted to talk about the problem of not using videos. Right. So for example, what I'm seeing here is you speak two to five times faster than you can type. And I made this up. We can replace it with uh, actual stats. I made this up because this was an example. Uh, We just replaced it with an actual stat. Maybe it's two times faster or three times or whatever. Why not send a video instead, right? So you speak two two to five times faster than you type. Why not send a video instead? What this does, it plants a seed in their head of whenever they start writing something that's really long, why not send a video instead? So every time that they do that throughout the day, they're going to think about how many times they could be using Loom, right? That means they're going to be sending way more of them. So what I did is I showed an image of a really long email. Uh, and I showed, uh, and it took like 20 minutes to write and uh, hours of back and forth, whereas you could have just recorded a video in three minutes, and that was it, right? Um, 
and I face this this issue myself because when I give feedback to clients, I can spend forty minutes writing everything out so I can record a five minute loom video, tell them what to fix, and they they can literally fix it in ten minutes, right, and change it, and it's, it's, everything is clear, right. So we're quantifying the problem. That and that also speaks to. To, to getting people to invite other team members because now you're creating that thing you mentioned earlier where if I send this Loom video to you, you're going to be like, what is this? Maybe I should sign up for this. And like this creates yeah. this whole almost team effect that you you were talking about earlier. So that's an awesome way to put this. Yeah, and not only we get more people to see the value, we get the uh, people that are probably already using it to find even more use cases for it and imagine the compound effect of the viral loop they already have if people that are already using it just figure out ways that they can use it more. The, the, that viral loop where people find out what Loom is uh, just happens like 10 times more often, right? That's the goal, uh, right? So that's what we want to do. Like, we want to quantify that. Then what I said is we can uh, embed Looms everywhere because in the va bad version, they had like a video. In this case, it's not a video. Uh, because you cannot see it in Figma, but they had like a video where you copy the link, you embed it in an email, and maybe you embed it on your website and all that stuff. Actually, we want to show all the use cases where you can embed a Loom video, in a, a in a in a like in an email, on LinkedIn as a post, in Slack to send it to the team, in Notion maybe as a company wiki. in Webflow for your website, in Discord probably same thing, or in like however many integrations that people want to use, right? So again, I'm focusing most of, most of the page just showing how many ways that you can use it. So when people do sign up, they just use it way more often than what they would have if they would come in with to the tool with just one idea on how to use it. Now they're coming into the tool with four, five, six, ten ideas on how they're going to use it every day, right? That's the difference. Setting the expectation completely differently. Right? Then what we did differently uh, is that when they try to explain each feature, right? Uh, when they try to explain that they want to reduce meetings, um, and then they, they essentially had one where it says nothing to schedule, nothing to type, right? So it's about reducing meetings. Then they have one uh, where it says be yourself, which doesn't mean anything, right? <laughs> um, and, and, and then he has one that says more than words, which also doesn't mean anything, right? right. So what I did instead as I talked about how we can make these videos insanely useful, right? Um, so what I said is instead of saying that you can reduce meetings, which might sound like a, a over-promising, is that you're improving communication while you're reducing meetings because you, you can use these videos, right? And then I also used a testimonial uh, from someone that is uh, like pretty well known, uh, where we said we're shocked at the amount of monthly and weekly meetings a few Loom videos can replace. Right, we love it even more since we can watch it as many times as we want. Right, so this is the advantage of Loom videos over meetings. Right, so we're just planting the seed that uh, a few meetings can be replaced with that. So we're quantifying it. We're just not saying it. It's not a claim. Is we're showing it. We're getting people to realize that by themselves, which is way more powerful. Right. Then instead of saying, uh, like, just be yourself. What I said instead is an objection that people have around creating videos because a lot of people are camera shy, right? So I called that out and I said, camera shy, you can easily record as many takes as you want with or without the camera, right? So it could be as fun, fun or formal as you want, as many takes as you need, right? So you can take as many takes as you want. It's literally as easy as clicking the restart button. Uh, you can do it with or without camera and and that's it. That's how we record like Loom videos. And you're not, um, they're not like afraid of it because people are like really camera shy, especially in like corporate world or companies that would have a lot of users and be the companies that would pay the most for this, right? So it'd be need to pay, uh, pay attention to that. Lastly, instead of saying uh, what they said here, more than words also more doesn't mean words. anything. It doesn't mean <laughs> more than words. Yeah, they definitely need better words, not more than words. <laughs> uh, so what I did is I actually did a cheeky headline just because if I write it as a formula, um, right. it kind of grabs people's attention because it's not it like is, gram right. uh, grammatically correct. Uh, <laughs> so um, 
what I said is that video plus replies equals perfect communication because that's kind of grabs their attention. And then the image on the side shows reactions, people adding comments, right? So instead of just saying more than words, we're showing that every single video can have a video reply. So you can reply back with a video. You can add comments on each video with timestamps. You can record a reply with just one click. This is how you really achieve a, per se, a perfect async communication just by sending videos, right? So we're showing how people can collaborate within each video. It's not just a video, it's a way where you can comment, where you can give feedback, where you can react, where you can reply back, right? So it's just much more than a video. Then, then after that, we just show a few more use cases. Uh, they actually had a few use cases there. I would just probably show a little bit more because what they're doing well here is they're showing different members of the team, right? So you can use this for team alignments. Maybe a manager would do that. Uh, design, where you can provide feedback on the design or sales. That I, uh, maybe you send a video before a demo or something, right? So uh, just providing more use cases for the exact same reason, uh, right? So they want to... I love this. Thank you for, for sharing this. Like you really did talk about uh, the multiple things that you mentioned. Like, you know, you're showing a result. You're showing how it could be better than what it is right now, which is... Uh, Writing, writing, you know, sending an email or an essay or something like that. That could be multiple hundred words. You're also like destroying uh, and uh, trying to address risk that they would face with this. So it all comes and your version now uh, makes it even more of an irresistible offer than what they currently have is, is what I'm hearing. So thank you for yeah. sharing this. I appreciate that. Yeah, no worries at all. With a bias of getting more users per account, because that would make a mm, huge difference in revenue. Because instead of uh, me getting five people in the team that know how to use Loom, now we're finding use cases for 10 people in the team to use it. Right. Imagine how big of a difference that would be for Loom. That's literally their main, like their best way to grow re uh, to grow revenue at this point, because they're so big right now that probably everyone or every company has heard of it or a good chunk of the world has heard of it before, right? And we, they, they just need more people in the company to use it and pay for it. I want to shift gears now and talk about career. You've been in marketing for many years now. Uh, and I wonder, is there something that you can share in terms of a power-up that's helped you progress through uh, your... I know before we recorded, you were sharing your goals of, uh, of mm -hmm. your 2023 goals of for your, for your own consultancy and business. But... Looking back, was there something that helped you progress uh, in your career, in your uh, uh, role, uh, you know, becoming even more of an expert in terms of uh, SaaS? Yeah, so there, there are a couple of things, um, maybe not the most comfortable ones, uh, but like I was sharing with you before, like I always put myself in a situation where I'm like forced uh, to become better. So like I was saying, uh, for example, in terms of how I want to expand my work with clients, I always want to expand it in a way where the support gets better, where it's like a win for everyone. But it, it has to force myself to streamline everything that I'm doing and find even more patterns than the ones that we're talking about now. Right? So always putting myself in those situations. Um, and then the second thing um, is probably like the who, not how. Right? So I spent like, I, I'm not sure how much, but definitely more than 100K just... Um, getting people to tell me how I can go to my next step, right? So I figure out whoever is doing something really well, uh, whoever has the results that I want to have for myself, and that's just paying them for them to tell me uh, how I can get there, right? Uh, with different areas, whatever I needed at the time. No, that's so true. I think pu pushing yourself, you know, that's something that I also have applied in my own life, like pushing myself outside of my comfort zone. And you're right, paying to get a mentor, essentially, to get somebody who knows where, who's been there and done that and kind of guiding you along. Right? That's pretty much a shortcut, right? Like giving you like, uh, uh, giving you advice and, and path towards. Yeah, what you want it's to definitely a shortcut, but it requires you to let go of your ego and to really see all the stuff as a, as an investment with a lot of people when it comes to that, ex they may say they want to do it, but when it comes to actually investing, they, they probably don't, they don't put their money, uh, their money where their mouth is. And then that's where they don't move forward. Is there one that you found the best in terms of, you know, for you, specifically for you, well, which one has helped you the most in terms of, um, you know, you said you invested a lot of money in terms of either coaches, coaches or courses. Is there a specific one that's helped you the most 
or your favorite one it could be also uh it wasn't like it wasn't really courses because courses they lack like a lot of that's true like a lot of one -on -one. Uh, feedback Question. so right. courses w wasn't definitely the case it was more like actually working with people and then tell me how to do it and have like long-term support for them um so definitely one that I could recommend to you was uh, from a guy called Quasi. Basically what, what he does, he has like this, uh, he's like insanely smart on how you can find your, like the limitations that you have in your mind that is kind of like limiting you. So I'll give you an example. And this is uh, one that might apply to you or something that we we're actually talking about before. I had these, these beliefs that hiring was really hard. I had this beliefs that, um, Selling something long term was really hard for no reason. And that would prevent me from doing that. That would prevent me from working with clients long term. That would prevent me of becoming better at my craft. Not hiring would prevent me from getting more clients, providing better support. Like, this is the stupidest thing ever, right? And he, help, he helps me find those things. I also found recently that I have rules for everything, then I shouldn't have rules for everything. Like, I need to say, I need to make this much money. Bef like, I need, like, I have a stupid goal where I'm only going to buy, like, I'm a huge car guy. And I have the stupid rule that I created unconsciously that I'm only going to buy a car if I can pay it off in a month. Right? So I have these, this, these stupid rules that I make up for myself. So he's definitely a genius of identifying those and taking a 10 year vision and breaking it down into something that it can do like every day because that was my problem right i had this big vision and then how do i get there and how do i feel that i'm getting there because otherwise you're just gonna uh with in this entrepreneurial world you're just gonna drive yourself nuts if you don't see uh, any sort of progress somehow and one final question before we wrap up if you can give yourself your younger self a piece of advice it could be one or two pieces of advice what advice would you get me maybe you just shared it right there <laughs> that they'll make mm -hmm. up those rules well, what advice would you give your yo a younger version of Pedro when you were just starting out in marketing? The advice I would give is I would probably hire way faster. Man, I had this huge limiting belief about it. Um, and man, like looking back, if you don't look back at yourself and don't think you're a complete idiot, you probably haven't grown enough. So that's that. Uh, I'm Sorry. I'm trying to, I'm just thinking about that instead of actually thinking about the lessons. Um, but that's probably probably what I would do. I would probably work with clients long term faster as well because I um, I don't know like myself like a few years back I also saw these things as like quick wins, and and I needed to force myself to see like how can we literally tweak these for years to come. Like now I look at a SaaS company and I look, we have opportunities for like two or three years where we can keep doubling the business if we want to, right? And um, that's something that I've, uh, I, I don't know, maybe I was uh, afraid that I wasn't good enough or something. I, I'm not sure. I love, I love how you put it. You're right. If you don't look back at yourself and like, oh man, what was I doing? Then you haven't got grown enough. I really love that. That's a good piece of advice on its own. I hope you learned a lot about how to improve your landing page from Pedro Cortez. Follow Pedro on LinkedIn and Twitter, and you can learn more about his work at Cortez.design. Find those links in the show notes and description. Thank you to Pedro for being on the show. If you enjoyed this episode, you'd love the Marketing Power Ups newsletter. I share the actionable takeaways and break down the frameworks of world-class marketers. You can go to marketingpowerups.com to subscribe and you'll instantly unlock the three best frameworks that top marketers use to hit their KPIs consistently and wow their colleagues. I want to say thank you to you for listening and please like and follow Marketing Power Ups on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. If you're feeling extra generous, kind of leave a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and leave a comment on YouTube. It goes a long way in others finding out about Marketing Power Ups. Thanks to Mary Saladin for creating the artwork and design. And thank you to Faisal Kaigo for editing the intro video. And of course, thank you for listening. That's all for now. Have a powered up day. Marketing Power Ups. Until the next episode.